So we're going to take a look at an example from my GitHub repository in the Java 8 folder in the EX18 project. And I will give you the link for this project. It's in my GitHub repository called Live Lessons. It shouldn't be hard to find where that is, but it's the EX18 example. And this particular program shows how to wait for the results of a stream of completable futures using either a custom collector or another helper method that I wrote called join all in my little stream utils file, which is basically a wrapper around completable future all of. In fact, both of these mechanisms are wrappers around completable future all of. So the actual program is interesting, but I'm not gonna dwell on it. What we're gonna do is we're going to make a list of method references that will be functions that will take a big integer and return the big integer after converting the big integer parameter into the factorial of that big integer. And again, I'm not gonna spend much time on those particular pieces, although they're kind of fun to talk about. What I wanna do more is talk about using the different approaches to wait for the computations to finish. So we come in here into the main entry point into the program, and you can see that we have uh, another field called S default N, which is the default factorial number, which is rather vast. It's the factorial of 100,000, which is very large. In fact, let me go ahead and start that computation because it takes a while to run. And uh, we come in here and figure out how big we want to do the computation, either that 100,000 or some command line argument. And then we go ahead and we run a timer test using our run timer time run method we've seen many times before that records the amount of time it takes to do some computation. And we're going to call these helper methods test join all and test futures collector. And we're going to pass in the list of factorials that we want to compute. And uh, we're going to talk about that, where we get that list from. And uh, we're going to pass in n, which is going to be the factorial we want to have. And we're going to pass in false to say that we don't want this thing to be overly verbose. If you turn Verbose on, you get lots more printouts. We call the uh, these methods twice just to warm up the thread pool, and then we call them again, and that's actually what gets recorded because we're using the name passed in as a string as the key to a map that's held by run timer time run. So it's going to keep track of the amount of time taken to do these computations. So of course, the fact list, as we saw earlier, is just this list of factorial methods to run. So let's go take a look at, uh, we'll take a look at test join all first. So test join all is going to take the list of factorials, or actually the list of factorial functions, and turn it into a stream. And then for each function in that stream, we're going to asynchronously apply that function. So we're going to first apply the function that's going to do sequential uh, computations. Let's go up here and see. We'll first apply this, uh, sorry, the synchronized parallel factorial algorithm, then the sequential stream factorial algorithm. And then we have two different parallel stream factorial algorithms. We don't really care what they do. They're just doing stuff and they're all doing the same stuff. So we can kind of do an apples to apples comparison. So all those computations take place in the background. And by using a sequential stream here, we end up with a stream of completable futures to big integer results, which of course will be the factorial of that computation n. So now we have a stream of completable futures to big integers. And we're gonna do two things with this. The first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and collect this into a list. And we can use the newer Java 12 variant to get rid of collect and just call to list on a stream. And that makes a list of completable futures to big integers. Now, at that point, really nothing has happened yet. We've just created this, this computation. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to call the, the to list method, which will start the computations running. So at this point, we've got a bunch of completable futures out running around in the background doing the computations. And now we're gonna go ahead and wait for them all to finish. And we're gonna do this in two ways, we're first going to use the join all method, which we're going to look at in a second, passing in the list, 
And we'll see what join all is going to do is it's going to return a single completable future that completes when all the completable futures in this results list complete. And that will actually not, that'll start that process going and we'll get back a completable future. And then we will join that completable future. And so we'll wait for the single uh, completable future to complete. And at that point, we will have a list of results. And then we go ahead and print those results out if we're running in verbose mode. So just for kicks, let's go and see what happens when we run this thing. So you can see here, we, we didn't turn verbose mode on. And so uh, the amount of time taken for test join all to execute was this amount of time, 2,707 milliseconds. But there's a second thing we ran that's running a little faster. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and see what that's doing. So that other computation is this one here called test futures collector. Test futures collector has the same parameters that test join all has. It takes the list of functions that will do the factorial computation. It takes the big integer n, takes the verbose flag. And what we're going to do here is we're going to run this as a, a parallel stream. And, and actually, honestly, it's probably better to just keep it as a stream. We don't really need this to be a parallel stream. Using a parallel stream and completable futures is kind of, uh, what do they say, belt and suspenders kind of approach. It's, it's probably overkill. Once again, we go ahead and start all those things running in the background using supply sync. So we'll have a stream of completable futures that are waiting for the results to be done. Except this time, what we're going to do is we're going to use the collect method to collect into a completable future using something called the futures collector. And we're going to go take a look at the futures collector here in just a second. So what that's going to return is a completable future to a list of big integers. And then we simply join on that at the end and print the results out. And we could have done this slightly differently if I was more inclined to chain everything together. I just could have said something like this. I could have said dot join here. And of course, that would have changed this into a list. I didn't do that just to keep it looking similar to the other one, but that's probably more in keeping with the fluent interface pattern style of programming. So, so that's the end of the main program.